Zero to 60, and today we're back on the supercharged M5. And if you've been following the channel, you probably know that time is ticking on, and I've got to get this to a panel beater. I've actually spoken to some last week, and they, uh, they've seen pictures, and they reckon it's not too bad of a job, so they just want to have a close look and get into it, really. So I'm super excited about that. But to do that, first I need to get a bonnet onto it, so that they haven't got to worry about the front end, because that should be relatively easy. Because I've got that 535 parts car from when I had the 540, um, they actually have the same front end. So I've ripped the front end off of that car, and it should just be a matter of bolting it onto this car, and then bolting the M5 bonnet on. It sounds really easy, and to be honest, it was actually pretty easy pulling the front end off of the parts car. So, we'll bring you along for it, and show you how to remove the fronts on these M5s. Let's get into it. These are the two main parts that you've got to swap. Um, there's a couple of other little bits and pieces that aren't here, but you'll see them when I get into it. I'll just show you actually how they're connected. There's these two main bolts here. They connect to either side of the car, just behind the front, just behind the front guards. And the other part, the other major thing that holds them on are the crash bumpers, or the crash shock absorbers, whatever you want to call them. They actually bolt through the radiator support panel, or the studs come from the chassis rails through the radiator support panel, and then onto those bumpers. So it really is just a matter of unclipping all the little plastic clips and wires that hold this plastic shroud on, because once that's removed, you can then get access to these bolts and these bolts and pull it off. Something to keep in mind, which I didn't know about when I pulled this off my parts car, I thought it was too easy. Um, once everything was unbolted, I went to pull it off and obviously the bonnet latch was still connected. So it is much easier if you unbolt them before you unbolt everything else. Top tip, let's do it. Before we get into ripping the RAN support panel off, obviously the front bar cover and the headlights do have to come out. They're pretty simple. I think you would have seen them in the painting video I did. But if you haven't seen that video, we'll go through it here as well. Basically the headlights is just these two bolts on the top, two bolts behind there, obviously all the plugs to go with it. And the front bar, there's a screw, a couple of screws on the front on the, on the splash guards in the in the guard liners. And then two major bolts that come through here, the bolt the front bar onto those crash bumpers. And that's literally all there is to it. So let's go to time lapse and rip this thing off. Okay, that's everything. It's almost actually nearly everything to pull everything off, but before you pull the whole rad support off, you have got to pull this plastic cover off. Uh, the only real reason, I think, is so you can get to the wiring and undo all the plugs properly. Um, that switch. So that's it there, and... So that can be unclipped, which is just for the fan. And then we'll be able to take the fan off, and then that should be the rest of the rad support. Uh, you shouldn't even have to take the fan off. Once these are off, that should. Oh, all come together. Yep, but again, don't forget about the uh, bonnet latch. This one's already undone, but you've just got to then pull the, the metal cable out from the latch, and then she'll fall off. Now, because these E39s, like a lot of BMWs, have two bonnet pins, they've obviously got two latches, and the, the way it works is the main bonnet release cable goes to that first latch, and then as that latch moves, it then pulls this shorter cable to the second one. So you have to fully remove this second cable, which yeah, you just release the cable like that, and pop her out. Uh, but this one over here, you haven't actually got to fully remove it because it is just that one cable. So you should be able to pull that cable out like that, swing it around, then release the big knob, and then that, that section and that latch can stay intact. And I reckon that's everything. Ta-da. Woo, wonky radiator support removed. Easy as that. Cool. Uh, got carried away when the camera wasn't filming then after we pulled that off, but from when it rolled into the car in front, it did bend the radiator a little bit. Doesn't look too bad, um, but once the bent rad support panel off, you could see this top corner was bent in a little bit. Well, you, you, can, go, you can still see where the yeah. radiator was up there. So. Yeah, they were in line. Literally all I did was, I don't have any options, so I literally just grabbed this side of the tank and just pivoted it on its mount up against the chassis rail, put a little bit of pressure on it, not too much, obviously didn't go crazy, and it looks like it's just straightened it up again. Time will tell if it leaks. Fingers crossed. And you're just giving it a bit of a clean up. Yeah, well, while it's you've off. got access to the condenser and stuff. Yeah, it's not very often you have access to all this sort of stuff. Um, so, may as well just, yeah, give the fins a bit of a wipe. And take a bit of the gubbish, rubbish away. Well, I've just been checking over everything that is behind the RAN support panel along as that radiator was a little bit bent. 
just to make sure there's not any other issues, but it all actually looks okay. Um, I'm hoping that now it is just as simple as lining the new one up and then tightening up all the bolts. All right. All right. So the headlight wiring go in that gap, don't they? They do. Oh, we've got some bolts already. Oh, no, that's the headlight. Yes, yeah, so that's the headlight. All the headlight bolts are in. Um, the only thing before it gets bolted on, we'll, we'll do a lineup. The only thing before it gets bolted on, we'll have to pop that that wire back in. Ah, uh, yep. So, are you you lined up right? Yeah, it goes up to the it's hard against the chassis and then lines up with the guard pretty much perfectly. Yeah, that's better than I was expecting. Awesome. All right, so right. I'm gonna put this cable in. Yeah. Probably should double check them before we um, slam the bonnet down. Yeah, when these bonnet latches break, you then can't get under the bonnet. Not what we want. All right, I think we'll switch to time lapse and we'll let you guys know if we have any issues bolting it back up. all of the radio support panel on uh, and this plastic air dam as well. Everything actually lined up pretty nicely and bolted on without having to adjust anything, which is nice. Um, now, literally you just gotta put the headlights in um, and then the front bar, and I think that's it. Oh, and put the radio mounts in as well, so that brings it, brings it in nice and tightly. It's been awesome having the parts car because even every single clip that was broken, you've had a spare one, so everything's actually gonna go back as it was intended. Yeah, except it says it's had the transmission, the automatic transmission serviced, which M5s didn't have that. Yeah. All right, let's get the headlights in and we're nearly done. Oh yeah. Nearly time for the bonnet. Another quick update because as you can see, the headlights are now in and it's nearly time for the front bar to go back on. But again, I was actually pretty surprised and pleased with the alignment. The only issue is this uh, left-hand front guard isn't quite perfect around the headlight. There's that little section there. Um, I'm not 100% sure why. There's not really much movement anywhere. But I mean, I guess coming from a parts car, it's probably not going to be perfect even if this hadn't been in an accident. But that's really the only really issue. And obviously, when it's at the um, when it's at the panel beater for the back end, I'll show them the front and see what they say. And it might just be a matter of them tweaking it or or something. But that's really the only issue. Obviously the headlights, headlights are in now, everything's plugged in, all the clips are in. I think it's time to put the front bar on. We've got the bonnet struts on, ready to go. Ready for the bonnet to slide in. So that's nearly it. It's nearly ready to drive without looking like a complete American. It's been too easy. All right, let's do it. Important moment, Dave. That's so much better having the front wheels. Yeah, it is. Hey, um, there's nothing in those tracks, is there? No. Hell no. So I think you just slam it down as hard as you can Look, for the first yeah. time. Yeah, and then yeah. if, if if the headlights aren't aligned, it'll just push them straight. One issue. So bonnet pins. Oh, they'll be on the other car. Oh, that means on. it won't latch, so we can check alignment. It's Sweet. perfect. Damn! That's all right. It's actually all right. The... Yeah, that's... So I might find this come forwards about two mil. Just a little bit close on that gap, but aside from that, it's actually pretty good. Yeah. I'm gonna make that adjustment. Now we've done a few more tweaks to the bonnet alignment and I'm gonna give it a final shot. 
a test. Okay, the front's lining up better. Gap there is all uniform. So it's pretty good down the side. I think it's as good as a BMW yeah. is ever going to be. It's not like a brand new Lexus, but it's pretty even. You're not going to notice any issues. Clearance against the light. Everything's good. It's probably about Tesla, Tesla spec. Well, that's it for the front end swap. It's actually gone pretty well. I'm happy with that. All that's really left to do before I take it to the panel shop, I'll give it a wash, uh, give the interior vacuum because it's always, well, it's always a good idea to drop your car off at whether it's a mechanic or a panel beat or, well, anywhere uh, as clean as possible because well, yeah, it's better to have the car clean rather than rocking up dirty. Um, it's actually, it's all gone gone together pretty well. I have already ordered uh, new front grills for this bonnet. Obviously that was damaged in the front end push, in the front end crash. Hopefully I'll get the panel beater just to um, fix this front bar up and give it another coat of paint. Cause it's not in too bad condition. No, no, nothing's cracked or broken. It's just had a had a bit of a scuff there from where it was pushed in. But it actually, um, well, it's starting to look like an M5 again. It, I must say when it does have the bonnet and you can't see the supercharger, it does look a lot less, well, a lot more tame, a lot less aggressive, but that's cool. It's getting close guys. I can't wait for this thing to be back on the road. So stay tuned. Now we're about to, well, the Renault's actually just gone into the shed now after the M5 and it's getting a decap pipe. So that'd be cool. It should sound a bit better and let it breathe a bit better for a bit more performance. So we'll get stuck into that. Thank you very much for watching. And we'll see you in the next one.